Hello guys, this is the Gaming Revolution here and the other day we got the Vanguard Zombies reveal and I've seen a lot of people in the community confused with their presentation so I thought I'd break down everything you need to know down into an easier to follow format using some information from Call of Duty's blog post and my own explanations. There will be chapters for each of the segments discussed in the description of this video. First of all, in terms of the storyline, it is set directly after the events of the Cyclotron incident at Project N station in Morisco, Poland. The Machina ripped a tear into the Dark Aether. Vanguard Zombies reveals that entities from the Dark Aether dimension had contact with humans going back centuries. We'll get a better sense of what was happening in the Dark Aether before the events at Project N Station changed everything. In fact, the Cyclotron incident at N Station is what sparks the events in Vanguard Zombies. The Dimensional Breach activates a long dormant artifacts collected by the Nazis, granting SS Commander Wolfram Von List, who is actually the uncle of Gorev, an opportunity to bond with a Lord of the Dark Aether and single-handedly win World War II for the Third Reich. This is actually quite interesting because I thought that the storyline may be before the activation of the Cyclotron, but it's actually afterwards, later in 1944. Only a small band of Allied Special Forces soldiers who have forged a similar bond with their own Dark Aether entities stand in his way. So we have new characters in a different setting than in Black Ops Cold War Zombies, but the same level of high stakes with global implications. All of this appears to be canon with the campaign for the game. So Oberfuhrer von List, commander of the SS Battalion Die Wahrheit, his soldiers have plundered the globe for mystical items such as the Holy Grail, Thor's Hammer, etc. And their search paid off with an artifact that has symbiotically bonded von List with a former Lord of the Dark Aether, Cortefex the Deathless. Cortefex shares his power to reanimate the dead and now the world is in danger of being overrun by an army of Nazi zombies. He uses this red artifact to summon zombies across the globe. These Dark Aether entities each have different abilities. So we won't get the ability of Cortefex since that's been given to Von List, but we will get the ability of Nauticus the Conqueror who once led Cortefex's armies in the Dark Aether but now they are sworn enemies. There is also Sarakix, the Shadow, who is a witty, wicked trickster who sees humans as playthings. We have Invictor, the Destroyer, who is the ultimate frontline fighter at home in the thick of battle and always out for blood. We have Belakar, the Warlock, who is a master of Dark Aether rune magic, fascinated by humans and their warlike ways. Players will learn more about these entities and their revolt against court effects as they progress deeper into the game. The thing is, we know that the lost Russian known as Zykov was sent in to seal up the Dark Aether breach at D Machina, and over the 400 Dark Aether years that he spent in there, the equivalent to 40 Earth years, he managed to overcome, endure, and survive by overthrowing all of the previous Elder Gods. He actually managed to consume and eat them, allowing him to absorb their abilities, becoming the most powerful Dark Aether entity known as the Fasci. Saken, of which he would then trick Omega into freeing him from the Dark Aether at Tessite Anna in Ukraine on June 4th, 1945. Then, thanks to Samantha Maxis's help and her Dark Aether powers, we would manage to defeat him. And that's what we saw in the conclusion to Black Ops Cold War Zombies. Within the Vanguard Zombies maps, we may actually encounter Zykov and his interactions with these entities, and it'll be interesting to see if we actually fight them, but most likely not as they are helping us. So just like how Von List has caught Effects' artifact to raise the undead, we too, our operators, are able to use these Dark Aether artifacts which are replacing the field upgrades from Black Ops Cold War Zombies. But they are basically the same thing. They have pretty much the same abilities, but there's less of them. More will likely be added post-launch. These artifacts will intrinsically bond the player with the Dark Aether Elder Gods, granting them with their powers. The reason the Elder Gods are helping us is because they want our help in defeating Court effects. That'll likely be the final boss in the final DLC map. So even though they are bad guys, they are simply helping us because they have a common goal with defeating court effects. So each of the abilities are the Sword of Invictor that grants you his Ring of Fire attack that sparks a Ring of Ethereal Flame to boost the damage output of anyone within the ring. And this lasts 15 seconds. We then have the Mask of Belikar that grants her Ethereal Shroud power, masking your presence from enemies for 
five seconds. We then have the Horn of Nauticus, which grants the Frost Blast ability, summoning a frigid vortex, damaging enemies with the initial blast, and slowing those that enter. And finally, we have the Dragon of Sarakix, that grants the energy mine ability that spawns an ethereal explosive, dealing massive damage to enemies who set it off. These upgrades can be selected prior to the game. It seems like there are no longer T upgrades for them, like in Cold War Zombies, unless you are able to upgrade them in game. Because Zykov ends up consuming the Elder Gods and harnessing their powers, this is why when we fight him, he is actually attacking us with these abilities, as well as the Forsaken has Cortifex's ability to control and summon the undead. The field upgrade canisters and Cold War Zombies created by Requiem manipulate the local residual Ethereum into various forms, giving us these abilities of the old ones. In Vanguard Zombies, the Dark Aether seems to be very different to in Cold War, as it is red and more hell-like due to its demonic theme. It seems like Zykov was responsible for turning it blue slash purple, oceanic and crystalline, as far as we can tell. When we defeat the Forsaken, we can see that the Dark Aether portal that Samantha enters is now red, inferring that by defeating the Forsaken, it has in turn freed the old ones he consumed, allowing them to rule the Dark Aether and return it to its prior red form once more. In the sequel to Cold War Zombies, we will most likely see the outcome of this and they will be the new threat. And although the old ones are helping us in Vanguard to defeat Court Effects, I doubt they'll be friendly in the sequel to Black Ops Cold War, so this prequel really sets the stage for our understanding of these Dark Aether entities and the Dark Aether itself. One of the old ones, Sparagmus, states that the old ones will reign once more in the Cold War Zombies intel and he is responsible for forging the Chrysalax Dark Aether Wonder Weapon. So yeah, that's the basic basic premise of a Vanguard Zombies, introducing us to these old ones that are going to be the main villain in the sequel to Cold War Zombies. In addition to sharing their valuable combat abilities, these entities will guide players, encouraging them in battle. But our enemies have allies from beyond this mortal realm. Our strength is yours. We are joined now and assisting them through various challenges in iconic locations. So yeah, they will be helping us out through the maps, as they need our help in defeating court effects. Now let's talk about the new modes in Vanguard Zombies. So the launch map is called Der and Fang, which means the beginning from German to English. Since this is a prequel and further explores the beginnings of the Dark Aether story by introducing us to the Old Ones. This new mode is a hybrid between Outbreak, Onslaught and Round Based Zombies, but it's the most similar to Outbreak. Like I said earlier, we play as operators once again, there is no set crew. Operators, skins, XP, weapon XP, blueprints, and battle pass progression will all transfer across modes, multiplayer, warzone, and zombies. The Vanguard Special Forces have come to Stalingrad in response to a distress call sent by Professor Kraft, a demonologist blackmailed into service of Von List. So he's going to be helping out Von List. Kraft has been uncovering Dark Aether runes across the globe, such as in Egypt and North Africa, potential future DLC locations. The soldiers find themselves trapped inside a containment spell conjured by court effects. Cut off from their superiors, they must fight against overwhelming undead forces, with craft guiding them over radios as their dark ether partners speak to them telepathically. So when you actually use the field upgrades, the artifacts in the game, you will hear these dark ether old ones talking to you. <laughs> It's very, very eerie. So the mode retains the World War II military feel, but with a unique fantasy slash horror edge. We are still in the iconic World War II settings, including the ruins of Stalingrad, the war-torn farms of Merville, the rooftops of Nazi-occupied Paris, and of the Japanese army camp at Shinonuma. All of these locations, trapped within Cortifex's barrier spell, have dark, disturbing visual touches. There are piles of exhumed corpses in Stalingrad, shrines and sacrifices of atop the Hotel Royale, with skulls and runes everywhere you look. To summarise, when you spawn in, you spawn in the multiplayer map Red Star based in Stalingrad. A lot of people don't like this map in multiplayer due to its layout and size, but I think that it'll work very well in Zombies. Unlike Outbreak and Onslaught in Cold War, all of the maps have been redesigned for their multiplayer counterparts to give them a darker, more demonic Zombies-esque aesthetic. In this small starting area, you are able to fight Zombies here. Red Star acts as the 
essential hub where you can access the Pack-a-Punch machine, there are three tiers of Pack-a-Punch just like in Cold War. We know that the Pack-a-Punch pieces were crafted by Zykov and it's the exact same Pack-a-Punch from Black Ops Cold War Zombies. I'm surprised by this because he's not even been in the Dark Ether long. I'm surprised he built it this early on. I was expecting us to see a demonic version of the Pack-a-Punch machine just like they've given us with the perk fountains. There's an ammo crate here, a crafting table and various other upgrade machines. There is no longer an armor station and it's simply been integrated into the crafting table. So you can purchase armor with the salvage gains from killing zombies here and completing objectives as well as lethal and tactical equipment. Score streaks are no longer available in the crafting table and because there's no armor station this means you can no longer upgrade your weapon rarity from the armor station but there's a new way to upgrade that I'll talk about later. I believe it does get more difficult the longer you stay in Stalingrad so you shouldn't stay here too long. And there is a red Dark Aether ring enclosing you in. There are three Dark Aether portals here that take you to the initial three objectives and a few other surprises. I'm guessing side quests and easter eggs like in Outbreak. Upon completing the objectives just like in Outbreak the world and enemies will get harder and this is how you progress in the rounds. Furthermore every time you complete an objective the maps will open up more. Like in Stalingrad giving you access to new things like perk fountains. You are able to teleport to and from the central hub to the objective maps via the portals. Like I said earlier, the three maps available are Shinonuma in Japan. Yes, it is back. I really have no idea why Trek chose to bring back Shinonuma. I wasn't expecting this at all, especially because ever since the Machina, Trek have been kind of leaning away from bringing back old maps. For example, they didn't feature Kino de Toten on Mawa de Toten, despite it being set literally down the street. So I'm not really sure what the choice was for bringing back Shinonuma. This is very unexpected, but I do think in the future seasons they may be bringing back more classic maps. Maybe we could see Nagdaron Toten as its own location, as well as Vrucht and Deriz. We then have the multiplayer map Hotel Royale in Paris. The war-torn farms at Mervel from the Normandy campaign mission all have been given creepier aesthetics for zombies. I like this change of pace because you can choose which region and objective to complete. Unlike an outbreak where you just go from random region and objective to the next random region and objective. This gives you choice. More portal locations will probably be added post launch similar to Outbreak. The player's first big decision is on which objective portal to interact with. On day one there will be three objectives available since we obviously have three different maps to teleport from Red Star 2. First we have a Bliss that's basically just a holdout where you have to survive in an enclosed area against the impeding hordes but you are taking the fight to them. Secondly we have Transmit where you will escort a floating zombie head as it seeks weaknesses to the dimensional barrier to the Dark Aether. It basically works just like the Orb from Onslaught. And finally we have Harvest where you hunt specific zombies that drop rune stones that you can collect that players will then have to deposit into an obelisk called the Sin Eater. So there's not really many objectives on day one but I'm guessing as I said they'll probably add more post launch. As you complete these objectives it will begin opening up the maps and Red Star's main hub more. For shorter matches, players will want to pick and choose the objectives and locations they feel will have the best chance of succeeding in. All focus on opening up the portion of the map that contains the perks they prefer. So yeah, it seems like there's no viable doors or barriers. It seems like the way that you open up the maps is simply by completing the objectives. Which I guess is very unique. We'll have to see how it actually plays out, but I guess it makes the maps feel different every time you play. For longer play sessions, players will need to plan more thoughtfully to open up even more of the map and aim for personal records. This makes the mode a lot more strategic and less repetitive than Outbreak, giving you so many different ways to play. The first enemies that players will encounter are the basic zombies, reanimated by Court Effects and Von List. While these zombies start off very manageable, their health, speed and attack power will increase as the match goes on, and you complete more objectives making the world harder. After a few objectives, the explosive Boom Shriers will begin to show up. We've seen various elements of these zombies before in past games, they're nothing really new. They're basically a sprinting proximity mine that can be very deadly. They will just instantly detonate as they get close to you and will run quite fast. You will then start to face the Sturm Krieger, an 8 foot tall monstrosity armed with a machine gun. So when we got the teaser image for Vanguard Zombies, I thought he had a chainsaw but he actually has a machine gun. You'll find better cover fast when engaging with him, they won't hesitate to mow down the horde to get out of their 
target. So this is probably going to be quite annoying because he's literally going to be able to shoot you. But it seems like you're going to be able to use the horde of zombies as a defense. If you hide behind the horde of zombies, the Sturmkrieger will actually just shoot down and mow down the entire horde. So this could be a way to kind of kill them easily. But I just hope that this boss isn't too annoying. I don't really like the idea of zombies having a minigun. So completing objectives is core to the gameplay loop. Awarding essence and salvage, which return as two crucial in-game currencies. Additionally, and more importantly, the player is rewarded with a sacrificial heart, used to gain buffs at the new altar of covenants. This system is something I really worry about in Vanguard Zombies. The altar of covenants is the main method for a player to truly define their gameplay build for that round. After every objective, players are rewarded with a sacrificial heart to spend at the altar of covenants, offering a wide variety of randomized upgrades to choose from, such as ammo gremlin, brain rot, or unholy ground. The altar of covenants also provides covenants for increasing rarity and power as the match goes on, so keep an eye out for those legendary covenants as you survive further into the game. So this is the way that you will upgrade your weapon rarity now it seems, or even potentially perks, field upgrades and other stuff too. It seems like this is the way that you will apply ammo mods onto your weapon, such as brain rot as well, instead of from the pack-a-punch machine. Once again, this is a really annoying and pointless change. I don't really understand why they've done this. So instead of upgrades being via a crystal tier unlock system in the menu, you may actually upgrade your stuff in-game via these random covenants instead. I'm really not sure about this. I don't like RNG things in zombies, especially when it can drastically affect how good you are. I think that this is a drastic mistake and I would much rather see a tier unlock system like Cold War Zombies. Yes, it may make every game more unique, but it's entirely based on chance at how successful you will be in your game. It seems like they've gotten rid of the weapon upgrades and the perk upgrades and the field upgrades and even the ammo mods in the pack punch machine and instead they've made them RNG that you receive from these covenants. This just seems like it's going to be so annoying, especially because the only way that you can get them is by completing the objective. So you have to complete the objectives to progress in the game, which is different to Outbreak because in Outbreak, theoretically you can just slowly build up points by just killing the zombies and completing the side objectives on the map and you can get a lot better stuff. But it seems like instead we're going to have to be using these covenants to get stuff in the game. And it seems like this mode is very fixated on the objectives and whilst it gives you more choice with which objectives you want to complete and maybe they're less tedious than Outbreak, you are forced to do the objectives in this mode to open up the map more to get perks as well as to get these covenants to upgrade various different stuff. So the covenant system allows players to lean into a specific playstyle. As an example, there are viable player builds that lean into melee and equipment use over guns. This would be a build utilizing bloodlust melee attacks to do more damage and heal. We then have Mother Load, a chance to keep equipment after use, and Splatterfest, enemies killed by explosions have a chance to explode. So yeah, these covenants will give you a load of random upgrades and abilities. Also, since the player only has access to a few covenants at a time, they may choose to alter playstyles mid-game because of a legendary covenant that becomes available later on. So yeah, it's cool that the covenants allow for different playstyles, but it's also somewhat up to chance. And I kind of feel like this is just going to become too annoying because in Cold War Zombies, you can kind of have everything really. There's no perk limit. And that's kind of the main way to upgrade your player, aside from pack-a-punching and upgrading your weapon rarity. But you can only have a few different covenants at a time, drastically changing up the playstyle. So yeah, it's cool that the covenants allow for different player styles, but it's just somewhat up to chance and I don't really like that. The mystery box is back and will also increase in power over time, giving players a random chance of really boosting their power. Does this mean weapon rarities are back? I'm not exactly sure what they mean by this. Something to note is that there are no longer any war buys, so the only way you can get weapons are via your loadout or the mystery box or via loot crates on the map. I know that's controversial to some and leans more into RNG, but this doesn't really bother me that much to be honest. Perks are back, but there's not machines like in Cold War, but they are now perk fountains that you drink with a goblet, so there may not be perk jingles unless they have demonic versions of their jingles instead. The perk fountains seem to give you the abilities of the gods. In Black Ops Cold War Zombies, Zykov was the one to mend the perk machines as he found scraps of them in the Dark Aether, and he actually helped us out by giving us the perks as he wanted to give us a fighting chance, as he wanted to manipulate us to freeing him from the Dark Aether, which he successfully managed 
to do. So I guess the old ones in Vanguard Zombies are the ones that are helping us out with the perks, but this is prior to Zykov mending the perk machines. Each fountain statue appears to be the same. We're not sure how perks work in Vanguard because there was a leaked achievement for drinking five perks, suggesting there may only be five perks in the game. And we see five different perks in the trailer. One that looks like speed color, allowing you to reload faster. One that is stamina up, allowing you to sprint faster. We then have a red one with a mouth with sharp teeth. I'm not sure what this does, but it may have something to do with biting or could be like Blood Wolf Bite, which was a perk in Black Ops 4. We then have one that has some kind of electric like symbol that could be something like electric cherry, or maybe it gives an electric shock to zombies when they hit you or something like that. I'm not exactly sure. We then have another electric perk, but this one is red instead of yellow. The perk system appears to be different in Vanguard and we are not exactly sure how it works. Stamina up and the electric looking perk are both identical in colour, so I wonder if the perks are random or we may be able to upgrade our perks in the game, potentially via the Covenants, or alternatively, we may even be able to select our perks prior to the game, like Black Ops 4 Zombies. At this moment in time it's unclear so we'll just have to wait for more info. I'm happy that the perks aren't identical to Cold War though, giving us gameplay variety and it seems like we're going to be seeing plenty of new perks this year. So considering the leaked achievements said that there are only 5 perks, but we see 5 perks in the trailer, surely this isn't all of them, especially when 2 of the perks are the same colour. And this is why it's making me believe that there might be different perks that you are able to select prior to starting the game. Or we are able to upgrade the perks somehow and that could change the icons. Because this would mean that there is no Juggernog unless it's this red perk, but the symbol is electric, so that wouldn't really make much sense. After the fourth objective has been completed, players will gain the ability to start the optional exfil event, allowing them to end the match successfully at their own pace. So yeah, exfils are returning from Cold War if you want to swiftly end the game and get your rewards. I wonder if we may see Raptor One's dad or someone exfilling us on a helicopter. Players will have access to just about all of their World War II favourite weapons and equipment. Players load in with their primary weapon and artifact of choice, just like Cold War Zombies, but this time around, however, players will need to earn backup weapons by looting chests, killing zombies and gambling on the mystery box in place of traditional war buys. You'll also see the return of the fan favourite Monkey Bomb. So chests are bagged from Outbreak are giving you more options to loot and get free weapons, perks, salvage and more. Most matches can end with a successful exfil in about 20 minutes. This means completing 4 objectives and then surviving the exfil event. However, only a portion of the full Stalingrad hub will be open at this point. For the players who want to push on to deeper runs, you'll have to keep completing objectives and opening up more of the map, giving you access to more upgrades to survive for longer. Every time players enter a new match, the objectives, their locations, and the covenants provided will all be different compared to the match before. This is where players will need to adapt their playstyle to the tools at hand, which varies up the gameplay in new ways. Once again, it's cool that every map is going to be different, at the same time it's heavily, heavily RNG based, which a lot of the community just don't like. Playing with other players cooperatively also mixes this up. Do you define roles so that only one player is using a Covenant slot on Resurrectionist, or does each player try to maximise their offence and hope for the best? Dura and Fang combines elements of classic round based zombies maps with the objective based gameplay mechanics introduced in Outbreak, along with fresh innovations we've never seen before in Zombies. The result is a fast paced experience that plunges players right into the action. First time players can start shooting zombies just moments after the match starts, everything is right there for players to complete objectives, earn rewards and upgrade weapons and abilities against ever strengthening foes. And if you are a casual player wanting to keep your match brief or just looking to end the match with a win, you are given the option to exfil safely, leaving combat with bonus XP and a feeling of accomplishment. So it does seem like Vanguard Zombies is catering to the casual audience but also the hardcore audience, it does seem like any new player can jump in and get the gist of it straight away and it's easy to learn and it's easy to play, but there's apparently a lot in Dirt and Fang that will feel familiar to veteran Zombies players as well, and there's also plenty that's brand new. The more objectives that players complete, the further they can upgrade their weapons, armour, abilities and so on. As they go on deep runs into varied and challenging play spaces, it really takes on the relentless excitement of higher rounds in classic Zombies maps. So apparently as you progress it starts to feel like classic Zombies, I'm not exactly sure if that's true, since you're still going to be completing objectives. So yeah, I'm not really sure what they mean by this because you 
will still have to complete objectives to progress the rounds on high rounds. Obviously on the high rounds you will have opened up the entire map, so it will be a lot more open like classic zombies experiences, but the rounds themselves surely won't play like round based classic maps. Yes you can just go around killing zombies, but if you don't complete the objectives you won't be progressing the rounds. So I'm really intrigued to see what they mean by this and if their statement is correct, will high rounds on a dirt and fang feel like classic zombies maps? Because we only have three different objectives and if we are just doing them over and over again, it's going to get very repetitive. Whilst you are able to just stay in Stalingrad and keep killing the zombies like classic zombies once it's fully opened up, that won't progress the rounds. You'll just be racking up points. Stalingrad, Paris, Merville and Shinonuma also feature a lot of interactable radios and dark ether runestones that contain intel recordings. Further fleshing out the characters, locations and backstory of this chapter of the Dark Aether Saga. The story will continue to evolve after Vanguard launches, taking players to new locations with new objectives and new characters. This really does make it sound like we're not going to be seeing round based maps in the DLC because they said the story will continue post launch, giving us new objectives, which makes it sound like we're going to be seeing more objective based modes slash maps as opposed to round based. Also why I think we might not be getting any round based maps is because the systems we have gotten revealed thus far don't really seem like they would work for round based maps because we now have these covenants and yes if they were to do round based maps I'm guessing they just wouldn't have the covenant system but they've taken out things like ammo mods and they've made them rewards of these covenants. They've also removed things like wall buys, there are also no score streaks and various of the different changes they've made seem like they wouldn't really fit for a round based experience and yes they can adjust and change them but like we've seen in Cold War all of the gameplay systems are consistent across the modes whether you are playing round based or you are playing outbreak the systems are exactly the same so would they adjust the systems between round based and the outbreak styled modes I'm not exactly sure because it just makes things a little bit more confusing veteran players have a lot to look forward to in this brand new zombies experience so yeah Intel is back to further expand the Dark Aether story, there may be some callback references to Shinonuma's old storyline in the intel, such as to Peter McCain. We did get a recent piece of intel in Black Ops Cold War Zombies suggesting that Peter McCain and Gersh's souls are orbs in the Dark Aether. So I wonder if we could see something about that. I know a lot of people don't like the intel system in Cold War Zombies, mainly because of the sheer quantity. I do hope that there's less intel in Vanguard Zombies and there's no RNG intel and it's just easier to collect as you are playing the game and doesn't really feel monotonous and like a chore. I really like the storyline told in the intel in Cold War Zombies but there is just way too much to keep up with and to remember the sheer quantity of. There is literally over 5 hours worth of recordings and very few people have the patience to just collect all of the intel let alone listen to that sheer quantity of intel. Overall my initial impression is that I think that Dirt and Fang will fix the pacing issues of Outbreak whilst limiting the play space and the stuff that you can do as there are no vehicles, there's less exploration due to smaller maps etc but this is an exchange for a lot more immediate fast paced action and better flow. Outbreak suffered from major pacing issues during the beginning of matches where it took a few objectives to start to pick up pace. It would often take too long to traverse across maps at times too. It does suck that there's less to do in this mode though as they still think a larger scale open world zombies mode is needed with parachuting, looting, vehicles, jump pads, fighting giants, roaming creatures like order and hopefully that's expanded upon in Treyarch's next game. This is essentially a scaled back refined version of Outbreak, it's a much smaller version of Outbreak with better flow and immediate action and less dawdling about. I think the objectives will be shorter too and less tedious than Outbreak whilst we get the choice now with how we want to play. I do worry about the covenants though, RNG's always been a pain, stripping back the field upgrades and perks is likewise worrisome, we don't know yet if there's even upgrade tiers that was one of the best things in Cold War Zombies. It will suck if during the DLC seasons they simply add back the field upgrades and perks that we already have in Cold War Zombies and this is the problem with having a new game every single year. Everything resets to ground zero instead of everything being consistently built upon over time. Stuff gets repackaged as DLC and new content when we have seen it before. Overall though I'm very excited for this new mode, despite it not being round based I think it will be just as fast paced as round based and hopefully we will see a better open world outbreak styled mode in the future. I really do hope that they allow us to play on round based versions of the
the Dirt and Fang locations too, Red Star, Shinonuma, Hotel Royale, and Merville Farms. This would give us four little bonus round-based survival maps if they just wanted to release them as their own round-based maps. I think this would please round-based and Outbreak fans and not alienate an audience. It's understandable that Dirt and Fang will be the main map with the main easter egg quest on it, but I'd love to see survival versions of these maps too. I don't really see why not, especially when Shinonuma is literally made in the game, why can they not release it as a survival version? One thing I want to say is that we have no confirmation of if we're even getting round based maps in Vanguard Zombies. Rumours aside, for all we know, the entire DLC seasons will consist of them experimenting with a bunch of new modes and gameplay styles. Honestly, if this was the case, I'd be okay with it, simply because this isn't even supposed to be a Treyarch Zombies year, and it may help them find the sweet spot and stuff that sticks well with the community. If we were getting round based maps in Vanguard Zombies, don't you think they would have mentioned something in the reveal? I'm really getting the vibes that none are coming and the rumours are false. I don't care either way because as I said it's not Treyarch's main year, and Treyarch are probably had at work on their Black Ops Cold War sequel in 2023, where Zombies will be set in the 90s and will follow on with Peck venturing to the Pacific Ocean where the Dark Aether Inversion Warheads landed. So Vanguard probably isn't the main focus as they are had at work on their next game. I wouldn't mind if this year is a bit more lacklustre so Trek's next game can be much better. At the end of the day, yes, round based maps are the bread and butter of zombies, but we've been getting them for over 10 years now. It is time for Trek to experiment and try new things to find out what we like. So when I say I feel like we might not be getting round based maps in the DLC, I'm referring to main fully fledged maps at least. They may give us survival versions of the Dirt and Fang maps of which I think would definitely help give people the choice on what they want to play and please both sides of the community. I think this would be the best way to go about it, if all of the DLC seasons are just giving us outbreak like modes or different modes, then just give us round based versions of those maps too and then you can please both sides of the community. There was a rumour from the Modern Warfare 2 Ghost that said that we would be getting a round based map in Season 1, but he's recently said it may even be later, but honestly I wouldn't be surprised if that is false and there are none at all. Maybe we'll just see a bunch of new modes this year and no round based maps, unless they give us round based versions of Shino Numa etc, but those would just be kind of like bonus maps, not main maps. We do know that there is PlayStation exclusive content coming. They recently posted the Vanguard launch trailer and it says that the content will be exclusive until November the 1st, 2022. I really do feel like this could be a Zombies exclusive mode like Onslaught and part of me feels like it could be the round based versions of the Dirt and Fang maps. If this was the case, the community would be so mad though. I am on PlayStation so it wouldn't really affect me but it would be kind of funny, I'm not going to lie, just to see the community meltdown but it would be crazy. The whole community would go into civil war fighting each other and everyone would be so mad at Activision and Sony. So we're just going to have to wait and find out what the exclusive content is. Right now though, don't believe the round based DLC rumours until we get official information as you may be setting yourself up for disappointment. The community does this often and I've done it often in the past. I've expected content to come because there's been a leak or a rumour and I've taken it as fact and then it ends up being false or Trek changed their plans or something happens and then it doesn't come true. And then I get let down and the community gets let down and then we get disappointed by whatever content we do end up receiving. Let me know if you would be fine with us not seeing round based maps if they go with your survival versions of the Dirt and Fang and future maps that are released to the game. I think this is the best way to go about it. It's fine having these new modes but have these survival versions too to make both fans happy. I just hope that if this is the case it isn't PlayStation exclusive. The community is going to go crazy. Anyways, thank you for watching the video and make sure to subscribe if you're around here for the latest and greatest Call of Duty news and information. So anyways, thank you for watching and uh, bye.